All right, so what I want to show you is how I pack up my lights into these crates. Oh my gosh, the symmetry's off. Anyways, so here's a 600D. It's packed away into a case, ready to go. We got that one done. Show you how I pack a 600D up. First thing is I get the light here, and then I'm gonna just loosen the brake. Drop it in here, lands right there, flat. And then a piece of foam comes down, and then the cables come in. Safety cable as well, everything lays flat. And then I put the clamp over here, or over here, lays flat, nice and clear. So that one's done. Let's move on to a 300D, which is, actually let's move on to a, the ballast for the lights. We have two lights, so we have two ballasts. Each crate holds two ballast. So when I bring two lights, I just bring an extra crate like this to hold both ballasts in. I foam on each side, foam all around, and then a divider. So that is all the ballast right there. Great. Now we're gonna do the 300Ds. The way this is done up is it has foam on the sides, foam on the ends, and foam on the bottom. Same as a 600D, except I have some dividers in here. And you'll see how they come into play. So first off, I'm gonna bring in my light. It's gonna go in, it won't go in straight like this, so you have to kind of turn it slightly. And we'll turn it in this way. It lands in, in there, nice and tight. And then we have the ballast. I always put the Bluetooth side, the smart side, away from the edge, towards the middle, it slides in. Then we have the clamp. I always leave these clamps open because then when you go to put them on a stand, they just slide on real quick. You don't really have to fight them too much and they stow away fine. And then on this one, I just drop the cables in like this and it's all done. Let's do that again. Like this. Actually, I did it upside down. I do it this way because I leave the arm up. So I didn't catch that. That's fine. Easy to adjust. Arm up. The brake. And then I come in with the clamp or the ballast and drop it right in here and then the cables go in and then the cables go in so that's how it looks right there here's without the cables it's set up like that and then they're in so now we have 600d head another 600d head two 300ds and two bowels so in five crates i have four powerful lights to be able to shoot with and they all stack nicely and can get out of your way no clunky cases that are odd sizes that's why i like a crate system and now how to build this guy this has my 600d inside of it it's the head only with the clamp and the cables and then the ballast go in separately so how do we build out this case here we go first thing you're going to need is a crate these are longer than standard size. Standard size are square. These are rectangle. Link in the, in the description below. Next thing you'll need is some kind of blade that kind of has a little bit of length to it so that you could uh, cut easier through the thick foam. Just a regular razor blade won't work. So I'll put these in the description. You get a big pack of these for very inexpensive. And then one template. So I use corrugated uh, plastic. You could use cardboard, whatever. First thing you're gonna do is cut the template to fit the bottom of the case, of uh, the crate, sorry. And if you look, everything else kind of goes off of that measurement. So you'll be able to adapt and do it quickly. So we're gonna put this off to the side here. And then we're gonna start with our first cut. Everything doesn't have to be perfect. If you get it within parameters, it's fine. So this is foam. And this foam is called closed cell foam. So 
this is how it looks. It's really dense. What you may be used to that comes in some of your Pelican cases and other things is open cell foam. It's too squishy and too soft. It crumbles up real easily. It's not really strong versus this stuff is really strong. So if you could get your hands on it, a lot of times, like my aperture lights came with some in the packing and it's really nice. And all you have to do is if you have scraps like this, you get a little bit of 3M uh, number 77 spray and just glue it onto something like this, which is um, corrugated plastic. And you can build out just the same way, but just follow along and see what we do with this. So we got the first thing cut. It's gonna go into the bottom and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna cut the rest of them. So I'm gonna use this template and then I'm gonna grab a piece of foam here. So these are scrap pieces from other builds. And then all I'm gonna do is cut it to size. So I'm gonna find where there's a good straight edge. I like it and then I'm gonna cut. Doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna cut it there and then I'm gonna cut it here. Got that cut off, great. That's cut off. Now I'm gonna move in here. Oh, see, I went off, gotta pay attention. I was looking at the camera. Don't look at the camera, don't look at the camera. I always tell people don't look at the camera. All right, so that's that piece. Where is this gonna go? So on this case, I'm gonna put this on the sides here first, but I'm gonna give myself a little bit of a gap. So I'm gonna pick up a scrap that I cut off and what I need is the thickness. And the reason we're doing this is we want it to clear off the top a little bit. So we're gonna do the difference. The thickness of this is a good measurement. So I'm gonna cut this scrap down. All right, pop it inside here. That gives us a little bit of height adjustment so we don't have to measure anything. And then I'm gonna go in. We got that height adjustment there, you can see. And then we're gonna cut this. And the way I cut it, it's gonna be a little difficult to see is I line it up and then I cut across the top. So let me get it in a good safe way. Cut away from you, don't cut towards you. Let's play it safe and smart. And we're gonna cut away from ourselves. So you don't wanna to cut towards your body because if you slip, you're gonna hurt yourself and you're gonna chop your head off or whatever else. All right, so now that clears and gives us a good distance. I did an ugly cut here. Look, it's not even nice. I'm gonna hide that by putting it in right there. Next piece, gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna set this little tester down, little spacer, set this guy in, and then we're gonna cut away from ourselves. I'm gonna cut to the side because it's easier for me. And it's okay if it's a little off. You see there's a little bit of spacing issues there. It's not perfectly snug, but this is what's gonna cinch it up. So we're gonna go in for the next move. And that is going to be one that's more the length. So get this guy back out in play, find a good straight edge, and then we're gonna cut it. Probably as straight as we can. I keep this blade out long, so then I don't have to go over it again. It gives me cleaner cuts. Like I said, these blades are very inexpensive. You could buy a multi-pack for real cheap. You'll end up losing these. I always lose them. I don't know why. So I have a ton of them. There we go. So now we're gonna fill in the gap here. So it's gonna go in this way. So what we have to do is we have to subtract the thickness of this and another one on the other side. So I'm gonna eyeball it. I like in this side better. Okay. So this fits the bottom. So we could do it like that or we could lay it down and measure out the thickness of two of these because that's the same thing. So let's try that out because those are falling and I don't trust them to not move on me. So I'm gonna do this. I'm going to think thickness one. All right. And then we'll get another one, thickness two. So that's a thickness of one, two. So we've got that there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself a little bit of wiggle room just in case it's wrong. So I'm going to move it in just slightly. 
So then if I end up cutting short, or, or it prevents me from cutting short there, this guy will fall right in now. Look, that's not even straight. It's all crooked, not a big deal. This falls into place here. And then what I'm gonna do is just like before, I'm gonna take a scrap to give us our height adjustment. And the reason we do the height adjustment is for stacking. So when I wanna stack, I don't have this sticking up on the edge when I wanna stack these crates. So I'm gonna make sure it's pressed down all the way on both sides. And then I'm gonna cut There's that, pull this guy out, pull this guy out over here. I left him in, that's in there, that's snug. And then the next piece will come across there and we'll be close to wrapping it up. So I'm gonna get another scrap piece. Let's see if this is wide enough. It is, I'm gonna make a new clean edge. So I'm gonna get here, I'm gonna cut off this excess here Doesn't have to be a perfect cut because we are cutting one end off. So we'll find the ugly end and cut it. Got this guy here. You can move as slowly as you want. You don't have to be this fast. I ended up getting pretty fast at it just because. And then I'm gonna bring this guy in, the one that we did previously, and at least cut the length correctly. Now I'm gonna give it a little bit of extra. So. We have this, line it up. All right, that's where we need to be. So I'm gonna make a mark and I'm gonna give it just a little bit extra. Perfect. Right there, there, and then take the cross. I like it. So now this guy is in here. Everything's falling, oh no. I'm going to switch sides on that because of the angle of the cut. I like that. And then we're going to put in a spacer here for height adjustment, just like we did before. Find the nicest edge, keep that at the bottom. Worst case scenario, that could become the top. Got the spacer coming here. And then don't cut towards your body. Don't cut towards your body. Copy, copy, copy. Go here. And then make sure the camera can see. Get this, make sure it's locked. Make sure my fingers are out of the way. Nice and curled up. All clear. There's that. And now, we have it padded all the way around, ready for a light. Okay, so we have it built out here. Now we need to make room for the handle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the blade and I'm gonna work it through the bottom part first. And I'm gonna flip the blade and work it to the other side here. And I'm gonna work my way around by just poking it and following the shape of the handle and then go for the vertical one as well and you're just going to follow the line poke your blade through make sure your hand's not on the other side of it perfect and then come down and i'm going to look at where i made the cut for the vertical line, and then I'm just gonna follow that and make a straight line. And we should have the cutout for the handle now. That popped out and it's done. I'm gonna do it to the other side. Again, I'm going to work this, get this blade through, go one way, then turn it around, get the blade through, go the other way, and then Work on this guy here, which should be just poke it in each direction. Same here. Poke it each direction. And then get that guy there. And then I'm going to flip it 
down. I'm going to look through the point to where I made the line going upward. So on this one, I can see it clearly here. It's there. And on the other side, I don't see it as clearly. So let's make sure I got it through. There it is. And I could see it now. That's it. It's done and the light can pop right into place and it's ready to go. I try to make these all at one time so they can be nice and done. This one looks way prettier. This one's not as pretty. Um, it all comes down to how much time you spend on it, but then you could have your equipment come in there and it's all nice and padded. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. If you have any input, please let me know. I like running this system because everything stacks real nice, makes it easy to transport, and this foam is actually really nice and it protects it. Same foam that's used in rental houses for cameras, lenses, and everything like that. If you do have issues of stuff coming loose a little bit, you can always uh, punch holes and uh, run some zip ties and a little bit of uh, you know washer or something so it doesn't punch through the foam. But once these start getting broken in, Everything works out great on them. Thank you so much, and I'll see you on the next one.